Now, the last time that you were here and we talked about terrifying gods of foreign lands, you were all fascinated and enthralled by the death and pain and suffering gods of Finland. But today, I am bringing a little bit of love, you could say, to North America. And we are going to explore some of the terrifyingly depicted, but unusually tame, death gods of North America. And these terrifying visages, I'm almost certain, you've never heard of. So grab your drink, grab your seed kids, I've got a story for you. Welcome back, wayward children, to my humble hovel. Let's get you back in touch with your roots, shall we? I am Castle, this is my tavern, and here we talk about myth and lore and tales of yore, but most specifically and usually a series of stories and tales that have been handed down to the traditions of my family for hundreds, if not thousands of years. But we are all about the sharing of the art of storytelling, and we do discuss lore from other fiction, as well as, on occasion, some historical lovely lovelies. In any case, welcome. If you haven't joined the clan yet, you should do that, and you can engage the button down below in Mortal Kombat, and we'll talk about that again at the end. In the meantime, let us talk about the death gods of North America you likely haven't heard of. Now, I'm gonna be perfectly honest, the last one isn't strictly from North America, so I cheated a little bit, but let's get into it. The first one is the death god of the Iroquois called Flint. Now, he has a native name, but I am not a speaker of Iroquoian dialects. I don't know how to pronounce it. I will put it here on the screen, along with a depiction of said god, but I myself do not know how to pronounce it, so I won't attempt to and butcher a language that I don't speak. But the story is one that is incredibly fascinating. Now, for anyone not familiar, the Iroquois Confederacy or the Iroquois Nation was a group of five and then six Native American tribes that stretched from like the upper part of Canada down into what is now the United States. And they were very large, they were very powerful for the time, and they were heavily influenced in the fur trade. And they had an incredible and fascinating set of lorus that were not only individual to each tribe, but over the course of time that they were the Iroquois Nation, they actually combined and this god, the god called Flint, or was the only death god from that coalition's deitol list. Now, there are gods that have to do with the sea and rejuvenation and so on, but the only one strictly referenced as being involved with death is Flint. Now, it's interesting that he is the death god because he only ever kills one person. Now, in some versions of the myth, he's a man and he becomes more deitol after he kills his mother. Now, in some versions of the myth, she dies in childbirth with him being the younger brother and killing her on his way out. Some have him killing her in his adulthood as a more of a sociopathic character who is driven by hatred and spite, but she is in fact the only one who he kills. Now, the reason why he is the death god he is sort of the Cain to the Abel in the sense that he brings death into the world as before his mother was killed. There was not a, a real record of death. There was no recognition of death. And his brother, ironically, becomes the god of creation by using the body of their mother 
to grow all life on Earth. And it's a really fascinating story. If you ever get a chance, I strongly recommend you look it up. But there, yeah, that's our first, and he's actually depicted as being quite terrifying. He's somewhat of a bogeyman in old Iroquois stories, but he only ever kills the one person, and it is his mother. With that being said, let's move on to someone who is depicted as far more terrifying, but is strangely far more harmless. Let's go a little bit farther down for this one to the Aztecs. Now, some of you may know already that I am talking about Miklantakultli, who is the god and guardian of Miklanti, which is the underworld of the Aztecs, or claimed by much of Mexico as a point of pride. Miklanti, or Miklan, is the afterlife of the Aztecs, and believed in many traditional aspects of modern-day Mexican culture in regards to things like Dias de las Muertes, as well as other death traditions and rituals and one of the depictions of the dead and the afterlife that we see commonly that is carried over from the tradition of this particular terrifying god is because in all depictions he is shown as being a horrifying and ridiculously tall like this man this god this creature this demon of the depths is depicted as being anywhere from seven to ten feet tall and either covered completely in bones or being a full-on skeleton and sometimes somewhere in between sometimes he's depicted as having a man's head with a skull face and a full-on human body and sometimes he's depicted as having a skeleton body and a human head like the depictions of this god are absolutely insane and terrifying i'm gonna put some artist renditions over here he's crazy scary looking but there are no myths of him really doing anything other than trying to stop the god of creation from creating creation in some stories he tries to stop the god of creation from creating things that same story is told as the god of the sun the god who created humanity and so on and so on he goes into Mictlan and he has to collect some bones and really all Mictlan Tikutli does is try to stop him from leaving he digs pit holes he tricks him it's a whole lot of very tom and jerry cat and mousey things but he is a, again a straight out bogeyman in aztec lore and he was terrifying and they used to sacrifice children to this guy back in the day cutting out the hearts the livers and the kidneys of children to burn and send to him but there aren't any popular or notable stories of him doing anything beyond just being a bit of a nuisance when the creation of the world was coming around. So he's not really all that terrifying. This list is turning out to be rather disappointing as far as terrifying goes. But don't worry. Our number one, our next guy, who is yeah, more from Greenland than from anywhere else with the Inuits. This guy. Oh, he's scary. Last and certainly not least is Anguta. Anguta is a god of the Inuits, and some of these are uh, some of the Inuit people who believed in Anguta were up in the northern part of Canada, out towards Alaska, into the Arctic, as well as out in Greenland. Now, it's incredibly interesting what this man's name is. Now, he's almost never depicted as a god, almost always depicted as a man. But what is interesting about this myth is Anguta, his name roughly translates to a man with something to cut. And what he cut in the mythology was his very own daughter. Cut her down, solidly dead. And ironically caused her to raise to godhood. Now, Anguta and his daughter are what are commonly referred to in mythology as a psychopomp. Psychopomps are ferrymen of death. These are the characters who are depicted as guarding or transferring people into the afterlife. Not the judges, they don't decide where they go. They just sort of ferry them in there. Now, a lot of people might believe that the Valkyries or the Valkyr are psychopomps, but the Valkyr actually make battlefield judgments on whether or not you are worthy to go to Valhalla. 
so they wouldn't exactly qualify. But coming back to Anguta, he killed his own daughter and dragged her through the snow. And this caused her to raise to godhood. She became enlightened and uplifted into a state of godhood, overseeing the whole of the afterlife. Not a judge, not a judge of the dead, but a keeper of the dead. Now, in the Inuit myth, you would sleep for a year in the lower afterlife, the underworld. You would sleep for a year there, and then you would ascend to a higher afterlife, and that was just sort of how it worked. You would spend a year basically getting your stuff together, getting your life or your death, your afterlife together, and then you would be ascended into a higher heaven, and that was true of everyone. It was a much simpler afterlife. It was it was much, much simpler than what we're used to from other mythologies. You didn't have to die in battle. You didn't have to do a thing. You just had to die, do your time in the first afterlife, and then you got a train ticket to the next one. It was very pleasant, very nice. But what makes Anguta terrifying is the fact that after he killed his daughter, his job for the rest of forever was to then drag the corpses of men and women and children down to the underworld to be watched over by the daughter who he slayed in cold blood and every day forced to serve the very daughter who he had killed and endless torture and you had to imagine that this creature, this man after a while would have been a terrifying sight to any soul or any body that he collected. That's why to me on this list he's the scariest of the lot. He doesn't look the scariest, he actually just looks like a guy in all depictions I've ever seen. He just looks like a man with a knife. Sometimes he's depicted as skeletal and sometimes he's depicted as a bit of a shadow. But nothing as terrifying as the other two on this list. But he's still, at least to me, the scariest of the death gods of North America. At least for this list. I hope you have enjoyed the story today, my friend. And if you have, I bid thee join the clan by engaging the subscribe button in Mortal Kombat. And you will know you have won when all the blood drains from its body and it becomes a deathly grave. And conveniently located to its right is the victory bell, which you can ring to let all know of your victory of the subscribe button. That's a bonus. You'll also always know when I upload a video. You can like the video as well. It is a traditional part of celebration when joining the clan to do so. And you can find it down in the Sporin section, all of my podcast participles and platforms, links to all of those things. And then you can head on down to the kilt section, lift her on up. There's nothing there now but we might get a little bit involved later on. And you can feel free to leave comments, questions, concerns, and compliments. Flattery will get you everywhere here, but a conversation and a question will get you into a video. So, in the meantime, I hope that you have enjoyed your drink, my friend, because as always, tonight, the stories were on me. Stay bloodthirsty, my friends, and remember, all hail.